we're asked to find the critical numbers for the given function. If f of x is defined at x equals c, and f prime of c equals zero or is undefined, then x equals c is a critical number. The first step in determining the critical numbers is to determine the domain of the given function. So there's a couple things to notice here. Because the index of the radical is odd, meaning here we have the fifth root of x, the radicander x can be any real number. It does not have to be non-negative. So there's no restriction on two times the fifth root of x, but notice here we have minus one divided by the fifth root of x to the fourth, and since division by zero is undefined, we must exclude x equals zero from the domain, and therefore we can state that x can't equal zero. So if we want to give the domain using interval notation, we would have the open interval from negative infinity to zero union of the open interval from zero to infinity. The reason that it is important to determine the domain is that when we determine the critical numbers, we now know zero cannot be a critical number because it's not in the domain. The next step is to work on determining the derivative function, but let's first rewrite the given function so that we can more easily determine the derivative. We can rewrite the fifth root of x as x to the one-fifth, giving us f of x equals two times x to the power of one-fifth. Then we have minus one divided by x to the power of four-fifths, which we can write as minus x to the power of negative four-fifths. And now we can more easily determine the derivative function. f prime of x is equal to the derivative of two times x to the power of one-fifth, which is equal to two times one-fifth times x to the power of one-fifth minus one. And then we have minus the derivative of x to the power of negative four-fifths, which is negative four-fifths times x to the power of negative four-fifths minus one. Now let's simplify here. We have f prime of x is equal to two-fifths x to the power of negative four-fifths, and then plus four-fifths times x to the power of negative four-fifths minus one is equal to negative nine-fifths. Now we could rewrite this using positive exponents. This is equivalent to two divided by the product of five and x to the power of four-fifths and then plus four divided by the product of five and x to the power of positive nine-fifths. So notice right away, the first derivative is undefined when we have division by zero, which does occur when x equals zero. But again, this is why we found the domain, x equals zero is not in the domain of the given function, and therefore we don't list x equals zero as a critical number. And now the next step is to determine where the first derivative is equal to zero by setting either a form of the derivative equal to zero in solving. Let's go ahead and use the form where we have positive exponents. So we have the equation two divided by five x to the power of four fifths plus four divided by five x to the power of nine fifths equals zero. And now to solve the equation, let's first clear the fractions from the equation by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, which is going to be five times x to the power of nine-fifths. Let's show some work in multiplying on the left. The first product is five x to the power of nine-fifths over one, if we want, times two divided by five x to the four-fifths. So first, notice when multiplying, five divided by five simplifies to one, which gives us two x to the power of nine-fifths divided by x to the four-fifths. And now we subtract the exponents on x to simplify, which gives us two times x to the power of nine-fifths minus four-fifths is five-fifths, which is equal to one. The first product is just two x. Then we have plus. For the next product, we have five x to the power of nine-fifths over one times four divided by five x to the power of nine-fifths. And here, notice five x to the power of nine-fifths divided by itself simplifies to one. The second product is just four. 
the equation simplifies to 2x plus 4 equals 0. Subtracting 4 on both sides, we have 2x equals negative 4. Dividing both sides by 2, we have x equals negative 2. x equals negative 2 is a critical number of the given function. So if the function does have any relative extrema, so if the function does have relative extrema, it will occur at x equals negative two, but this is not a guarantee. We will have a relative extrema at x equals negative two. Let's take a look at the graph of the given function. The function is graphed here in purple, and notice at x equals negative two, we do have a high point that represents a relative maximum. I hope you found this helpful.